Namo Bhutthaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am going to take up verse 341 to 360 of the Dhammapad. Uh, all the earlier verses, there is a playlist that is available on my channel Dhammapad where you can get the uh, list of all the videos that I have made on Dhammapad verse wise. Right? So, uh, let us continue our learning. This is verse 341 to 360 and the theme is thirst. Right? Uh, the theme is thirst, the cravings, right? So Buddha said that the cravings, the selfish cravings that we have are the cause of our suffering and the, the even the deeper cause of our cravings is ignorance. Ignorance that these cravings, we think that they will provide us uh, happiness but they do not, they do not because they are impermanent and we are all, we are impermanent and they are impermanent. So Buddha is talking about uh, the th thirst related verses are there, these, right? So, Verse 341, 342, 343, they are, com they are combined in one para. I am referring to this book, The Dhammapad by Eknath Iswaran. This is the translation that I am referring to. It's a good translation. You can buy this book and re uh, read yourself also. So, Buddha says, All human beings are subject to attachment and thirst for pleasure. Hankering after these, they are caught in the cycle of birth and death. Driven by this thirst, they run about, frightened like a hunted hare, suffering more and more. Driven by this thirst, they run about frightened like a hunted hare. Overcome this thirst and be free. So Buddha is here encouraging us to overcome this, th this thirst of running after things in search of pleasure. And the hankering after these things, it's the, the cycle of birth and death is caused. And Buddha gives the example of a hunted hare and the person who is driven by this thirst, he runs about frightened like a hunted hare. So, as what we, you know, uh, go after our lives, searching for money, power, pleasure, desire, lust, all these things. For us, we are totally like running mindless. But a person like Buddha, when he sees us, he's, he sees us like a hare who is being hunted and he is just running here and there, right? So what we need to do is become more mindful of how the habit energies in our mind drive us into this, in, drive us in finding pleasure into the, these things in the outer world. So we have to see, it's not about not engaging in the outer things, it's about engaging in them, no problem, but not have, not have this intention of not running after these things with the intention of finding pleasure. The pleasure is, the happiness is within us. When we become still, when we become mindful, that is, there is, therein lies the pleasure in us. So we have to engage in all the things, being in the world, but not find our happiness, search our happiness in these things. Right? Verse 344, Buddha says, Some, if they manage to come out of one forest of cravings, are driven into another. Though free, they run into bondage again. So, uh, and this is what is uh, what I can relate to this fact that when we are on the spiritual path also, we are also getting tested. So, uh, if you are on the path, then l uh, money comes, then lust comes, lot of things come and test us. So, a person who gets free from this desire for money gets, you know, gets, uh, you know, drowned into the desire for lust. Then spiritual attainments, spiritual powers come. Some people fall for that. So, there are many traps. And we need to understand that, you know, we should not fall into that any trap. Our, our aim should be our spiritual goal uh, and we should just keep the focus on that spiritual goal. Right? Verse 3, 345, 346 Fetters of wood, rope or even iron, say the wise, are not as strong as selfish attachment to the wealth and family. Such fetters drag us down and are hard to break. Break them by overcoming selfish desires and turn from the world of sensory pleasure without a backward glance. So Buddha is comparing the fetters of, he is saying that fetters of wood, rope or even iron, fetters means chains. They are not even as strong as the attachment that we have towards wealth and family. So Buddha is putting special emphasis on attachments towards wealth and family. They are the deepest attachments. All other attachments you can overcome. But these attachments, they are very, very difficult to overcome. And they are drag us down and are hard to break. So break them from by overcoming these selfish desires 
turn from the world of sensory pleasures without a backward class do not even look back so it's like said that if you don't want to go on a particular path don't even look at it right so we just shun that path of so it's not that we do not uh, we 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 leave our family and wealth and all other things and go into the forest no buddha did not said that buddha said that do not have these selfish desires not even an ounce of selfish desires the re- related to family and wealth right okay verse 341 buddha says like a spider caught in his own web is a person like a spider caught in its own web is a person driven by fierce cravings break out of the web and turn away from the world of sensory pleasure right so buddha is comparing here a person who is after the in caught in the cravings is like a spider who is caught in his own web like we also like a spider who creates his own web and is becomes stuck in it we also create create our own web of desires and then we get stuck in it and we get stuck in it from lifetime after lifetime unless we come into the path of knowledge and we realize that we have to overcome this these desires so that is what buddha is saying so verse 320 348 buddha says if you want to reach the other shore of existence give up what is before behind and in between set your mind free and go beyond birth and death give up what is before behind and in between right just give up whatever all the desires that we have in this lifetime that we have just give up them set your mind free set your mind free your mind from all these desires and go beyond birth and death that means achieve nirvana word verse 349 350 buddha says if you want to reach the other shore don't let doubts passions and cravings strengthen your fetters meditate deeply discriminate between the pleasant and the permanent and break the fetters of mara right so buddha is saying that don't let the doubts the doubts that we have on the teacher on our practice isn't it and on our spiritual progress passions all the passions about the worldly objects and the cravings don't let them strengthen our chains meditate deeply buddha is asking us to meditate deeply right meditation is where we develop our mind so much so that we get insight we we get the wisdom that this is all impermanent so how to do meditation you can practice insight meditation which is also called vipassana meditation i made separate with merit uh, video on the insight meditation how to practice it i'll make more videos on insight meditation start doing the insight meditation from today right spend some time doing meditation daily and go deep into it discrimination discriminate between the pleasant and permanent and break the fetters of mara verse 351 those who are free from fear thirst and sin fear thirst and sin have removed all thorns from their life their, this body is their last this body is their last they will not be born again verse 352 they are supremely wise who are free from compulsive urges and attachments and who understand what the words what the word really stand for this body is their last right so buddha is saying that those who are supremely wise who are who are free from compulsive urges urges that like that drive us into doing th- certain things right we cannot like so our discerning ability our discretion is clouded by these by these urges that come from our deep unconscious because we have practiced them so much like food sex all these things right hatred they are like so deeply hardwired we are and you know they just drive us into doing certain things they drive our behaviors so people who are free from these compulsive urges and attachments and they understand what the words really stand for what these words stand for is suffering they realize that these these have created suffering for me for all this time all the various lifetimes and they will continue to create suffering if i for, keep keep in them they 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 for them this body is the last they have achieved nirvana and they will not be born again now buddha is talk, talking about himself some of the verses buddha says i have conquered myself and live in purity i know all i have left everything behind and live in freedom having taught myself to whom i shall i shall to whom shall i point as a teacher so buddha is said that through his self effort and this is what you know makes me 
adore the Buddha, adore, you know, see Buddha as a role model, is that Buddha did everything with his self-effort, right? There is no some blessing or some, some grace that have dawned on him and he achieved. So it's like said that even before coming from in this particular lifetime that he came, he had done a lot of penance and the good deeds and the generous deeds in his many, many previous lifetimes to achieve the status of Arahant in this lifetime. And what he did was that there was no path that was there in front of him. When he escaped his family, when he left his family, he was totally clueless, but he wanted the reason, the answer for his suffering. So he did not have a guru or a guide to show him a clear path. And he consulted various teachers who could just take him to a particular level and he could not satis- and they could not satisfy his search for the ultimate truth. And then through his penance of six years, he finally found the ultimate truth, which he gave as the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. Now friends, how lucky we are as the disciples of the Buddha is that the path has been given to us. We don't have to do the hard work of, you know, doing that penance and finding that particular path. We just have to have faith in our teacher and just follow that path. So how blessed, how lucky we are. First, to get a human life and second, to have a teacher like Buddha. Where the knowledge that Buddha has given us, it's like free from dogma, from rituals, from belief in some, 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 uh, uh, some God or, you know, some blind belief or something. It's totally free from that. It's all based on the scientific thing that what you sow, you shall reap. So start doing the right things. Right? The knowledge of Vipassana that Buddha has given is totally unique. Right? No other master had given that kind of knowledge. So the knowledge of Vipassana, which is insight. The knowledge of insight meditation. So start practicing that. We are so lucky to have Buddha as our teacher. Verse 354, Buddha says, There is no gift better than the gift of the Dharma. No gift more sweet. No gift more joyful. It puts an end to cravings and the sorrow they bring. Right? So if you want to gift anyone, give the gift of Dharma. Right? Spread the Dharma. Like what I have been doing. This is just my way that I want to spread you know, these teachings. Because see, I am on my learning journey myself. But you know, this knowledge has to spread, friends. This knowledge that is lost, it, that has to go out. And more and more people have to be aware of this knowledge. So, thank you. If you are, re- if you are viewing this video, you are, you are, you are helping me to, to, you know, come in, give this dharma to you in wh- whatever little capacity that I can. And it is upon you to give this dharma in your own way, what you think, whichever way you want. The smallest contribution it can bring to anyone else's life. So that you can give. So, there are many, many ways you can give wealth, you know, a lot of things and food and everything. But Buddha is saying the gift of Dhamma is the better Dharma. The Pali word is dhar- Dhamma. The Hindi word is Dharma. No gift more sweet, more joyful. Puts an end to cravings. So, any gift that gives other gifts, what they do is that they give short-term pleasure. But this gift puts an end to sorrow. Puts an end to cravings. Verse 355, Buddha says, Wealth harms the greedy, but not those who seek nirvana. Of little understanding, the greedy harm themselves and those around them. So, existence of wealth, wealth per se is not a problem. We should not taint money. It's basically your own desire, how you want to use the money. So, wealth harms the greedy. It harms the greedy people, but not those who seek nirvana. Verse 356, greed ruins the mind and as the weeds ruin the fields. Therefore, honor those who are free from greed. Right? Greed ruins our mind. So better, avoid the greed. As like weeds ruin the field. Verse 357, lust ruins the mind as the weeds ruin the fields. Therefore, honor those who are free from lust. 358. Hatred ruins the minds as weeds ruin the fields. Therefore, honor those who are free from hatred. So, 359. Selfish desires ruin the mind as weeds ruin the fields. Therefore, honor those who are free from selfish desire. So, Buddha here talks about greed, lust, 
hatred, selfish desire and wealth. All these things ruin our mind. So we need to be, we need to basically be free from these things. What we, what we need to be free? Greed, lust, hatred, selfish desires. Right? Be free from these things. See, we can only control our mind. We cannot control anything else. So we'll just touch upon verse 360 and then I'll close this video. Uh, verse 360 Buddha says, Train your eyes and ears. Train your nose and tongue. The senses are good friends when they are trained. So Buddha again brings, comes back. See, all these issues, all these cravings, they are latent in the latent defilements, uh, present in us as the latent defilements. But when they become activated is where we have an object in front of us. It may be a woman, it may be a man, it may be some good food, it may be some something in the television that we won't want to see, it may be money, right? And then through the sense doors, the eyes, ears, nose, touch, you know, these sense doors, these latent defilements get activated. So if we are trained in mindfulness, if we are mindful, then even if we see those objects, the greed, aversion, hatred, these things do not come up in our consciousness. Mindfulness is like a watchman of our sense tools. So that kind of a training. So senses are good friends. They help us evaluate, perceive the world. But they have, they can, we, don't, we have to ensure that they do not become our master. They do not, we should, we should ensure that they do not let us you know, let these cravings and strong cravings arise in us, make us do certain things which create unwholesome karma. They should not make us do unwholesome, you know, uh, kind of actions through thoughts, words, speech, which creates unwholesome karma. And because then we remain stuck in this cycle of birth and death because we cannot escape our karma. Right? So this is ver uh, verse 350, 341 to 360. I hope uh, this helps you in some way. Uh, if you have any thoughts, feedbacks, comment, uh, any reflection on any of these verses, do share in the comment section. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.